Uh, thank you, John. Uh, first of all, a great thanks to our colleagues in public service from the legislature who were here, to all of our friends and supporters, including many organizations. But I want to really pay a special tribute to AARP. Thank you for your constant advocacy and to the union representatives who are here. Organized labor has been behind reform and solvency for Social Security because it sees firsthand the real life consequences of our failure to keep pace with the inflation and costs of living and burdens that people have and that Social Security has failed to meet. Uh, I'm proud to stand here with John Larson, as I have done in years past, and to serve as the lead Senate sponsor of this bill, along with my colleague Chris Van Hollen of Maryland. I'm proud to lead this effort in the Senate because it's an idea whose time has come. To the people of Connecticut, let me just say, these 700,000 Social Security recipients are our friends, our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, our moms and dads, and soon it will be you. Soon it will be everyone in the state of Connecticut, except maybe the billionaires, and we have some who don't need it. And right now, they're not paying their fair share into Social Security. This measure assures that the wealthiest pay their fair share into Social Security. It assures that ordinary Americans who pay their fair share right now get their fair share back. Social Security 2100, a sacred trust. It is sacred. It is a trust. It's a promise. A great nation keeps its promises, not walk away from them. America should keep its promise to Social Security recipients. And that means the widows and widowers. It means the teachers who right now are shortchanged. It means the caregivers who get no credit when they take care of their parents, for example, or people who may be disabled. They are shortchanged under the current system. And it means recognizing that our seniors have a different cost of living. They pay more for certain kinds of food, certain kinds of housing, certain kinds of prescription drugs. The cost of living adjustment has to keep pace with inflation as it affects seniors. Now, I think we have a rare opportunity in this session of Congress. It's an opportunity that has to be seized because we may not have it forever. Let's be real. We have a president in the White House who is committed to this bill and its goals. We have two houses of Congress that are committed to this bill and its goals. We need to do it now, not wait, now. And that's why this coalition is so tremendously important. We need to make our voices and faces heard and seen in Washington, D.C. We announced this bill last week in the House and the Senate. We need to take it forward with the ferocity and the eloquence that John Larson has done for literally more than a decade. He has been a champion of this bill through good times and bad politically. He has never wavered. I've been proud to be at his side because we know in Connecticut the difference that it will make. If you talk to your friends and neighbors, you know Social Security is the major force to keep children out of poverty. It is the major force to keep women out of poverty. And it helps our veterans and so many others. It's ripple effect throughout the economy, particularly as we recover from the pandemic.
pandemic effect of the downturn that we suffered here in Connecticut is going to be just a major force for everyone's recovery. So we are all better off when we are all better off. This Social Security program is a way to recognize American values and make sure we keep faith with them and everybody who needs fairness under our Social Security program. I'm proud to be here today and to stand with John Larson and all the great advocates who are here. We're going to get it done with your help. Thank you.